You're right, folks, and welcome back. When Blizzard announced Kiata Classic at last year's BlizzCon, one of the things they revealed off the bat was the modern wardrobe system for the transmog feature that was first implemented during original Cataclysm. This is something that I myself speculated we'd see some months prior, because it just makes sense. If you played World of Warcraft between Kiata and Warlords, then you all know that the old-fashioned way wasn't the most friendly, or sleek, or really all that clever. It was in fact quite clunky and just a headache for anyone who was generally invested in the appearance of their character, and enjoyed altering said appearance on a semi-regular basis, because you'd first have to farm the items in question, fair enough, then you'd have to have them stored on your character somewhere at all times. Bags, bank, void storage, and that obviously limited the amount of transmogs you could have at any one time per character, and if you wanted a new set or something, you'd have to consider getting rid of some of the items you've already farmed, meaning if you ever wanted to go back to the items you've elected to get rid of, you'd have to once again re-farm them. In some cases as well, depending on how committed you were to your transmog, there really wouldn't even be space for other things like food or flasks or pots, or in the case of one guy I knew in Mr. Pandaria, a hearthstone. Again, clunky and a headache. This was remedied, thankfully, in Legion, where Blizzard introduced the wardrobe system that is in use today, and is what we will see in Kiata Classic. So today I'm going to go over what to expect with this new and improved version of Transmog. So if you've not played retail in a while, or any version of WoW where this kind of system is in use, hopefully you'll come away from this with a better understanding of what to expect come Kiata Classic. So I keep using this strange, arcane phrase, wardrobe system, what the hell is that then? Good question, mean. Like any other collection system, which is what this is, like your mounts, pets, toys, etc., you'll get a whole UI based around transmog with the drop-down menus, the ability to see what you do have and what you don't, and even check where certain items can be acquired, so a boss drop or a certain quest, etc. Basically, you can window shop before you even go hunting a piece down. And like those other UIs and systems, it's an account-wide thing. So any leather gear you acquire on your rogue will be available on your druid and vice versa, with the exception of tier gear, which will only be available to other characters you have of that respective class. But it is very much like a wardrobe. You open a menu, flick through what appearances you have, and you can just start gluing together a homemade clown suit. There are some limitations, however, mainly pertaining to what kind of appearances certain classes can collect and subsequently use. So a mage will not be able to loot a male item and have that item be added to the collection. Uh, it would have to be a shaman or a hunter. Weapons work in a similar fashion. If the class you're playing can't equip the weapon, the appearance will be added to your wardrobe. Warriors get the most out of this. Pretty much any weapon they pick up just gets bungled into their collection because they can technically use every type of weapon available in the game. There are also some appearances that will be restricted based on reputation and faction and whatnot. For example, if there is a unique helmet or weapon or something of that kind that is a reward for being exalted with a certain faction, in a lot of cases that appearance will not be available to other characters that don't meet the rep requirements, so just bear that in mind. Just because an item has been added to your collection, it doesn't necessarily mean it will be available to all your characters if they haven't got the correct rep. And like I mentioned, since the appearances will be added to this collection's UI, like mounts, pets and toys before it, it means you no longer need to keep the item itself in your bags. Which means if you've got a load of old gear clogging up your bank, you can get sure of it the second the expansion hits, assuming you aren't emotionally attached to your tier 4 or something. Now, I keep banging on about when you collect an appearance and when it gets added to your wardrobe, but how do you know you've actually collected a new look? Another good question, me! In your chat box, you will get a notification saying X item has been added to your appearance collection, and if you were to then click on the item itself in this notification message, it will then open up your transmog UI and show you the item. So if you've picked up a random bit of kit in your travels and want to know what it looks like, you can do it the old-fashioned way, of course, just control click and voila, but this is new and fancy and you can view the item as an item and not necessarily tainted by your hideous orcish form. 
There are a few caveats to this though. If you purchase an item from a vendor or loot it in a dungeon and it's got that two hour trade or return timer on it, if you trade or return the item during that window, the appearance generally is removed from your collection. So you can't game the system by buying and returning items or trading them back and forth with your friends. If you acquire an item with a trade or return timer and you wish to retain that appearance, you'll need to keep it until said timer has elapsed or you've just equipped it. This also applies to BOE items. If you get a BOE, generally it won't be added to your collection immediately. You will need to equip said item for it to be added to your wardrobe, and it's for much the same reasons as I just mentioned. It's to save people trading items back and forth, and everyone getting potentially a very rare appearance with no consequence or trade-off. On a slightly lighter note, there is a handy little feature with the modern system, the ability to save sets. So once you've cobbled together your outfit for the evening and it rather takes your fancy and you want to keep it in your back pocket for repeated use, you can just save it as it is and the next time you're at the transmog shop in your respective capital city, it'll be there waiting. You can name it and everything. So instead of having to individually hunt down each and every piece in your selected set, you can just click the preset you've made and ka-ching. But what about appearances from quests or content you've completed before and can't go back to? Well, when the wardrobe system first reared its head, it was designed in such a way that any items you'd picked up from quests Bosses, random mobs kicked to death in a back alley in 2006 were automatically added to your collection, mostly. Yeah, this wasn't a foolproof system and some items did slip through the cracks for a lot of people and I was one of them. So, story time with Carrot. Back in Mr. Pandari, my hunter who was the first tune I got to 90 but ultimately wasn't my main, had the same gun from start to finish. It dropped from Yanthu the Uncasked, the final boss in the Stormstrike Brewery, week one of the expansion, and I didn't replace it until I got a green questing bow in Warlords of Draenor. Seriously, I don't know how or why, but I had the worst weapon luck on that character, that expansion. I'm sure there was probably a BOE or something else I could have grinded, but I didn't. Either way, that gun was one of the numerous items that was omitted from my collection come Legion. So you've been warned. And that's the basics, really. The only other thing to know is that there is, of course, a gold cost for items transmogged, so be sure not to bankrupt yourself in the pursuit of aesthetic perfection. And yeah, it's not a complicated system by any stretch, and despite what some people may say, especially with regards to Classic, transmog is one of the most popular pastimes WoW has ever spawned. So getting this version of it is certainly going to hook people in and allow them to be more invested in the appearance of their character than they otherwise might have been. But with that said, there are still a few unknowns with this system going into Cataclassic as of right now. So let's take a look at some of them. Weapon enchants. They're called illusions under this system and they can be picked up from a number of sources, ranging from dungeon and raid bosses from throughout the game's history to being things that enchanters can create and sell themselves or even reputation rewards. These are separate to actual enchants and are simply things that are added to your collection's UI but have no effect on gameplay or anything like that. Thing is, however, the concept of Weapon Illusions is a Legion invention, much like the wardrobe itself, and was designed to make people go back through old content, which I suppose is what Transmog does as well. So whether or not Blizzard introduced them in Kata is something we'll have to wait for the beta to reveal. Then there are legendaries. Now, some people get quite aggravated when the topic of transmogable legendaries gets brought up in conversation. Ultimately, I don't see an issue with it, but each to their own. Thing is, the idea of past legendaries being mogged onto current items only came into effect during the final patch of Battle for Azeroth, and as of this video, there isn't any confirmation yet as to whether or not you will be able to paste your Thunder Fury onto your Dungeon Blues in Classic Kata. Legendaries themselves also cannot be transmogged over, even in retail. So without some tweaks, it is likely that if you are to get a Dragon Wrath or Fangs of the Father, you will be stuck with them as it were. Now you may not think this is a problem, and fair enough, it's not the biggest issue. I myself even said in my video on the Cat of Legendaries that I believe they should be this almighty status symbol, and a symbol like that is not something you'll probably want to hide. However, if you're going for a holier-than-thou priest aesthetic, a big stick with dragon horns doesn't quite fit that. 
But if we do get a version of things where legendaries can be transmogged, there is yet another caveat. Warglaives of Azanoth. Now, these oh-so-sought-after sexy beasts can only be transmogged in retail by demon hunters after they first collected the blades, then by doing the time-walking version of Black Temple. So again, without a slight change to this, the warriors and rogues of this world with a pair of glaives gathering dust in their banks won't get a chance to show them off. Next thing on my list is hidden items. What's that mean? Well, you know how you can hide your helmet and cloak in the interface menu in Classic? In retail, you can do that via the transmog system instead. And a whole lot more besides. You can in fact hide the appearance of every item on your character, save your trousers and your weapon. So you can basically run around in what amounts to your underwear in most cases. This also allows you to hide slash transmog individual shoulder pads as well, so it's pretty neat. It's quite a small thing in the grand scheme, so I don't see why we wouldn't get this, but it does really depend on how Blizzard are feeling at the time. And one unknown that I'm really curious about are classes who use multiple armor types through their leveling. When the wardrobe system was added in Legion, this was no longer a feature of the game. Paladins and warriors wore plate from level 1, hunters and shamans wore mail, so it didn't really matter. That's not the case in Kata, however, and since in retail you can't transmog an armor type other than your primary one, even if you're, say, wearing leather on your DK, you just can't access your leather transmogs on that character. So I'm really intrigued to see how Blizzard will handle this. Will classes who use multiple armor types as they level be able to collect and use the appearance of their pre-40 gear until they learn the ability to use play or mail respectively, or will it be a case of no transmog at all until they're rocking their endgame armor types? Final unknown then, really. Trash items. So, for the longest time, the lowest quality item that could be added to your wardrobe was uncommon, so greens. However, in retail, whites and greys can also be thrown into the mix now. So, if you fancy looking like a level 5 hobo, you can crack on. Again, like a previous point in this video, I don't see why we wouldn't get this, and like that last point, it kind of depends on how far Blizzard want to take this system for Cat Classic. But if they're giving us the modern transmog system, this probably should be included. But again, only time will tell. Last thing I want to mention then before I finish, because I know if I don't, some clever clogs in the comments will try and be like, Haha, you missed this. So, The War Within. The next retail expansion is set to make a change to transmog where warbands are concerned. So, warbands are a system coming in The War Within that essentially allows you to link up a few of your characters, and any progress such as reputation and whatnot will be shared amongst them. So, working towards a goal on your main will also affect any alts you have attached to said main, and vice versa with this system. Transmog is also going to be affected by this. So, for example, if your main is a monk and you got a DK and a warlock in your warband, any plate or cloth items you pick up on the monk will actually be added to your collection, but still only usable by classes of the correct armor type. Because this is something slated for the War Within, which will launch after Counter Classic, I do not see this feature being added at launch at the very least. They might patch it in after the War Within has released, but I really wouldn't hold your breath. Anyway, that's me. Hope you enjoyed, and if you were unsure as to what the transmog changes have to offer, hopefully you have a better idea of things now. Well, let me know your own thoughts down below. Please like, like sub, share your pals, and so on. That'll be grand. Have a good one, folks. Bye for now.